pretty cool, huh? See, this is my bike. Now, my bike is designed to be ridden. Now, I know a lot of people that have bikes, and what they do is they, they buy a bicycle, and then they hang it up in their garage, and they never see it again. You know, they get the idea that somehow if they buy a bike, then they're going to ride the bike. And if they ride the bike, then they're going to lose weight and work on their cardiovascular, you know, that kind of thing that you kind of work on when you get older and, you know, kind of learn how to breathe again. You know, because when you were younger, you learned how to breathe because you ran around and enjoyed things and did things, you know. And in older days, you kind of learned that you could do whatever you wanted to, so you plopped down on the couch, you know, and started watching TV and became a couch potato. And then as a young person, people were throwing you in front of computers and, and television sets, so you wound up being a digital person, so you don't do much either. Because you sit around gaming, right? You know what I'm saying. You don't do much in the way of physical exercise. Well, this bike, you know, this bike doesn't do anything for me. It helps me, but it doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't make me lose weight. It doesn't make me get in shape. It doesn't make me do anything. I have to make the bike do something in order for me to get in shape. I have to get on it. I have to, you know, sit here and pretend like I'm riding a bike. No, of course not. <laughs> That's stupid, isn't it? Well, that's the way I look at kind of the way most of us are when it comes to Christianity. It's pretty stupid to, you know, buy a Bible and never read it. It's pretty stupid, you know, to sit in a church and never participate. To me, it's pretty stupid, you know, and I'm using the word stupid just in case you make a mistake. S-T-U-P-I-D. It's pretty stupid to think that you're going to get something from God unless you exercise your faith to do it. In other words, people tell me all the time that, you know, oh, if God would only speak to me. And I say, well, he does. No, he didn't. Yeah, he does. No, no, he didn't. Yeah, he does. See, you're dull of hearing, so you don't know that God is speaking. But according to the word of God, God is always speaking. He's always talking. He's always got something to be said. Book of Revelation, it says that around the throne of God, there's constant verbal, you know, worship going on day and night. Man, to me, that's kind of like, you know, says something, you know, about the way it is in heaven. But my personal relationship with God, you know, I frankly don't find God being silent that much, you know, when Jesus himself is making intercession for us, you know. Then I have to believe that he is always talking to God on our behalf. I kind of feel like... The problem when people tell me about communication isn't on God's side, but it's on our side. You know, kind of like this bike. You know, unless you get on the bike, like I'm on the bike, and unless you start pedaling, you're not going anywhere. Now, this bike is kind of neat because, you know, you could pedal backwards. But you know what? When you're pedaling backwards, you're not going anywhere. You need to take this sucker out on the street like I'm about to do. Now, I'm not one of those exercise jocks. I'm sorry. You know, I'm... I'm more like you. I'm one lazy person. I hate exercise. As a matter of fact, I hate physical activity completely, except dancing. Now, dancing, I'll admit, you know, I get pretty, I'm a pretty good dancer, and pretty physical kind of dancing. I like, you know, rock and roll, so I get really into it, you know, like, you know, and I get really going, and I sweat, unbelievable, and I can drop 10 pounds almost, you know, seven pounds approximate in one night. But that's because of my metabolism and the fact that I have Crohn's and I'm suffering from a lot of things that should have killed me already, but oh well. And I have almost zero body fat, you know. I, eh, well, you know, my fat index is kind of all messed up. So I have to keep taking in fat in order to try to get some love handles and hang on to them. Now my wife's going to argue with that statement because, <laughs> God bless her, you know. She managed somehow, and I'm not quite sure how, but all my life I've been like 140 pounds, five foot nine, and pretty skinny, you know, all my life. And, you know, most of the time, you know, I've always prayed that God would make me fat, you know, that I'd become some fat little round, roly-poly kind of guy, you know, and kind of like happy, jovial, you know, and 
never happen. Just wouldn't happen because, quite frankly, my body type just doesn't deal with that. So even with my disease that's killing me, I was, quite frankly, healthier than doctors know how to deal with. And all at the same time, likewise, never gaining weight and taking in, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 calories. You know, I take in a huge amount of calories. I can burn them up, you know, just by thinking or even working on the computer. But my wife, God bless her, this last winter, holy cow, I don't know what happened, but I got up to like 180 and I was pushing 190. I went, ah, and I felt horrible. I was like, you know, man, when I got up from the computer, I about fainted, you know, I mean, because I was so out of shape that I needed to do something, you know, because I used to always depend upon my ability to you know, do God's will and God would move me into places where I was required to work hard. Like I've gone from network engineer, which is just sitting on a computer, you know, sometimes even days at a time, you know, working on the network, you know, if it crashes or whatever, you got to rebuild it. So that could take, you know, 24, 48 hours, you know, sometimes longer. But being a geek where you're just sitting with a monitor to being the opposite extreme where I was a journeyman boiler maker. And I was out in the 110 degree weather with a welder, you know, beside by my side, you know, and we're working on, you know, 15 stories up, you know, propped up and, you know, kind of linked into, you know, not falling down all the way to the ground, you know, 15 stories and welding these pieces and fabricating things, you know, at power plants, you know, and mills and doing all kinds of like really ridiculous things, you know, like going down inside tanks, you know, and welding little steps to go up to where we could weld, you know, and being there for him and handing him stuff and making sure he didn't catch fire and, you know, doing all kinds of weird things. But that was hard physical labor, you know, 12 hour days, 10 hour days, you know, and just sweating like a pig and getting filthy, dirty, you know, and dealing with hazmats and all that stuff. That was fun. <laughs> but the point is, God took me from one extreme to the other. Well, now he's wanting me to learn balance, you know, to kind of like not be all one way or all the other way. God wants me to be his way. And you know, one of the things you learn about doing it his way is that you can't have it your way. You have to learn to pray, read your Bible, do things in a disciplined way. You know, every day, you know, take a little bit of time for prayer, to talk to God, you know, kind of like... Hey God, I'm here. You want to talk to me? I'm listening. And being still for a certain amount of time. You can't always time it, but you know, a certain amount of time. Doing that in the morning. Then you also kind of need to like, you know, read your Bible because you know, unless you put something in, you can't get something out. And if I don't drink this water like I'm doing right now, When I go on that bike bike ride right now that I'm about to do, I get instant cause and effect to my body because I'm missing half of my guts. You know, most of my guts have been removed. I got a bag on my side. But the point is, is that because my metabolism is all messed up, I react immediately to stresses that you know are on the body. You know, and thank God I have a strong mind, but <laughs> keeps me going in faith. You know, God by my spirit, you know, is able to keep my body going even when it's dying. But if I don't drink water, when I go out and I start to sweat, I'll pass out, literally. You know, it'll bring my blood pressure all messed up unless I keep replacing fluids that I lose so easily. So I have to constantly drink, you know, a lot of water, you know, do all that kind of thing, you know. And then, of all things, because I'm older, it's terrible. You know, I have to go, and because I have like this precancerous tissue here, you know, that was like, skin messed up because of being in the sun, you know, from driving. I used to be a truck driver too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I did a lot of jobs. You know, class, class A, C, L, whatever, you know, with all the duallys and, you know, the, you know what I'm saying. Hazmats and stuff, you know, when I was in Alaska. But anyways, because I'd sit and, you know, like the sun is always hit beating me on the face right there because I'm always driving. Well, guess what? Now it's susceptible to cancer. So I have to kind of keep it this side of my face protected from the sun. Did you know you have to be protected from Satan and his wilds? You have to literally do something 
in order to not be serving Satan. Because if you aren't protecting yourself from the world and his ways, you are the world and his ways. You're caught up in politics, you're caught up in social causes, you're caught up in all these things, but not seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So reading the word is kind of like one of those little disciplines that, like this, I have to put on whenever I go in the sun. Whenever you go into the world, which is every day, as soon as you get out of bed, you need to read the word. You need to read your Bible. You know, you need to protect yourself. Put on the armor of God, you know. Or in this case, put on your sunblock. Hey, you know, it's just too bright. And some things in the world are too powerful for you. They're gonna overcome you. So in order to overcome, you gotta have the word. So that's the second thing you need to do. But then more than that, you know, you need also to kind of study, you know, like you need to do some exercising of your faith. You know, you kind of got to get on a bike. Now, it's nice to get on the bike, but you still got to do something with the bike. You got to take it outside and go for a ride. You know, and how far you go or how short you go is up to you. But as soon as you start pedaling, you're going to be moving. Once you're moving in a direction, then you're heading in that direction and you have some place to go. Because no matter what you do, if you're moving your feet on the pedal, unless you're going backwards, you're moving forward. And so, in order to move forward, you have to have a Bible study. Yeah, did you know that? You have to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to study in order to grow. I mean, yeah, you could pretend like, you know, the bike is going to take you there. Go, bike, go. Come on, go. Go, bike, go. Bike, I'm telling you, if you don't go, I'm going to beat you. In the name of Jesus, I command you, bike, to go. And you know what? It ain't going to work. Because you can put all your faith into that bike, but unless you do the work, it ain't going to happen. So the works of the flesh don't accomplish much, but the works of the Spirit, they accomplish much more. And studying the Word of God is the works of the Spirit. Because the Spirit was given so that you would study and learn, and He would give you ears to hear and eyes to see what it is that the Spirit would teach you of Jesus. He would explain it to you. You would have a relationship with Him. And as He causes you to study, guess what? The bike moving forward is going in a direction. Now, the Bible says the direction of a man's heart is his own, but the footsteps are ordered of the Lord. So you may be steering, you know, and you may think that you know where you're going, but God's going to direct you. Because you see, as I'm heading down the road, if that road is blocked, I either got to go around or I got to go back. So I trust God every day when I pray to direct me in the way he wants me to go. So when I'm riding my bike, I kind of say a prayer and say, God, take me there. You know, and I go. When I'm studying the Bible, I do the same. I say a prayer and say, God, take me there. And he does. He takes me where he wants me to study. I don't just go with the flow like where most people know that they're going to get what they want whenever they go there. Because it's kind of like somebody else picked that topic. I don't want to study that. And even when I was like at one of the big mega churches, you know, of my day in the Jesus movement, you know, like down at Calvary. Oh, sure, I'd go to a Bible study you know, on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because I went seven days a week, which is kind of unusual, but I was able to do it because I was on a fixed income. <laughs> oh, well. But, you know, when you're disabled, what do you do? But the, you go to church. <laughs> so I was able to study. So when I would go to a study, sometimes I'd be right there with, you know, the pastor, you know, and they're, they're reading about this, you know, and then they'd say something, I'd go... Oh, wow. And then it would just like the Holy Spirit would take over and he'd take me off on a tangent, you know, studying this part that that place of where I was at may have been good for what I was hearing at the moment. But then God would add the increase and I would be taught what he wanted me to learn. And I enjoy that freedom that God has with each individual person. I may be starting off by talking about a bicycle riding on, you know, the streets. And you may wind up somehow with a Harley going down the highway, heading to the mountains. I don't know how you get there, but you know what? If God inspires you for a Harley, go for the Harley. <laughs> me? Eh. I don't do Harleys, and I don't want one. Because me personally, I don't know. Chuck Smith a long time ago talked this uh, Bible study about how pastors, you know, they get all these, you know, toys, and they would, you know, personify, you know, looking like they were wealthy. You know, because they had their Porsches outside in a Bible study, you know, and they had their their Harleys and their their expensive cars up at, you know, the conference center in those days. And he said, you know, what do you think it looks like to people? You know, and he gave this really moving devotional. And uh, 
the next morning, all the Porsches were gone and all the Ferraris, you know, all the expensive cars. And, you know, it was kind of like more humble means were pretty obvious. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I kind of look at pastors with Harleys that way. Maybe you don't, but I kind of feel that way for myself. Now, I understand 90% of Calvary's pastors today probably have a Harley, and they probably think that it's the most wonderful thing in the world. And even those pastors that went to that conference, I'm sure they're back to riding their bikes and you know, expensive stuff. But me, I love this little mongoose bike, you know, because the mongoose usually is about 100 200 you know, even $300. But you know, whenever I want something, I go ask God and I say, you know, God, I can't afford those kind of bikes. I'd love to have one that, you know, has springs, so that way when I hit a bump in the road, you know, it's kind of like, you know, being prepared with the Word of God, you know, I will promise, well, I have springs, that I'm able to handle it. Well, I like the springs on the mongoose, so I always kept saying, God, you know, I can't afford it, so until you bring it about, I'm not buying one. And I've never bought much brand new, but boy, in a yard sale, 30 bucks. It was like, God, I really need to exercise. So I was driving down the road, my wife and I, and we looked and saw, ah, honey, turn. We turned, you know, and we pulled into the, the there, and sure enough, the guy says, well, you know, I want, I forget if it was 40 or 35, my wife, you know, used to, because she pretty much had money in those days, probably would have bought it for what it was worth. So she goes over and offers him less and take, buys it. <laughs> I got her trained right. <laughs> we're not we're not frugal. We're cheap. <laughs> but the point being is that the bike itself can't drive itself. You know, I mean, I could push it and get off it and it'll go fall over. But with me on it, exercising by way of pedaling, you know, it's able to take me where I want to go. The same thing is true about Bible studies. Is that if you exercise your faith in a Bible study, God will take you where you want to go. Where he wants you to be is up to you and him. But it'll take you where you want to go, which is to know God personally in a personal and intimate way. And you have to practice those things and exercise each one of them balanced out in your life. Otherwise, you're going to wind up being one minute, like I was, a network engineer. The next minute, a journeyman water maker. The next minute, a truck driver the next minute a dishwasher, the next minute a servant of the Most High God, the next minute, you know, whatever I am today, which is just a man with God. You know, I love that little thing that I say, a man with God, because, you see, there are a lot of people that are man, men of God, you know, and, well, that's good, you know, they're godly men, you know, I'm sure, God bless them, whatever they're doing. I'm just a man with God, because, see, I'm nobody special. I like to try to remind people that, because sometimes people think I'm somebody special, because... I love the Word of God, so I know a lot. You know, I really do know the Scriptures because, frankly, where I was trained and taught, we all knew the Scriptures. But then in the Jesus movement, we kind of were that way. You know, when you're around it enough, you know, you're going to get it. <laughs> Believe me. And when you're going to church seven days a week, you better be coming out of there with something, you know. And for me, I love the Word of God. You know, I was like so thrilled when I could go up to Calvary Conference Center because they had a library there, and I couldn't afford Bibles, much less, you know, studied material. So in those days, before computers, really, uh, kind of like mixed computers, you know, Usenet was around, you know, I finally got on that. But at that time, I couldn't even get a concordance, you know, so when I found my first concordance, wow, I went up to Calvary Conference Center, they had all these books, you know, on the walls, and everybody was out playing volleyball, you know, and doing their, you know, like outdoorish things. I was studying, you know, call me Jewish, but oh well, you know. <laughs> I really loved it, you know, and that was my first experience with really reading the Bible and studying, you know, and I got in-depth, I did my first word study, never even knew what a word study was, you know, so it was kind of cool, you know, I loved it, and I've always loved studying, so people think that, you know, I'm somebody special, and I go, well, no, you know, I just happen to love the Word of God like you love sports, you know, or you love some other thing, you know, that you get all wrapped up in. 
I'm not really interested in, you know, sports or jobs or careers or all this other junk that people do in the world. I'm more interested in what the Word of God says, you know, and kind of what's going on in the universe and the earth and the heavens, you know, and <laughs> with what God's telling me to do. But that's just me. You know, maybe you're different. Maybe you love sports, you know. Okay, you know. Enjoy. <laughs> but I look at my life and say, I'm really not anyone special because God is, and what He's done in my life is pretty miraculous and special in a lot of ways, but I'm not. I'm nobody special. I just happen to be the recipient of God's grace. I happen to be the one that God used at different times in people's lives. I happen to be the one that God right now is inspiring at times to share the Word of God, but that doesn't mean that I'm different than you. I still struggle. I still have failings and fallings and stumblings and running into things, you know, and messing up and screwing up and, you know, still got my flesh, you know, to deal with, just like you. I still have to crucify that sucker and exercise, you know, and deny it, you know, deny myself lots of times. And I'm just as narcissistic as you are. I'm an American, so yes, we are selfish. We are very self-centered, selfish people. But we have moments of glorious insight and inspiration from the Word of God as He is alive and well living in us that He causes us to step outside of ourselves to be like Him at moments. We should be like that always. But even, no offense to these Pentecostals that run around saying they're prophets and all these other things, you know, that they say that they're always walking in spirit. They're not. They're human beings too and they have struggles, trials and tribulations. They fail at times. So, I like to remind people every once in a while, you know, it's like, hey, don't put me on a pedestal, because if you watch the video, you already know I'm nobody special, you know, and there's nothing really miraculous about me, you know. And anytime that somebody thinks there is, you know, don't look too close, because God sees my heart, and I'm just as evil and corrupt inside. And I like to say it this way, leave me alone for five minutes, and I'll sin just as fast as the next guy, you know, and quite frankly, that's why... I go on my bike ride, you know, is that I hate bike rides. I kind of like looking around, but, you know, if I was sitting on a little motorized motor scooter instead of a Harley, <laughs> then I'd like that better because I wouldn't have to do anything. But God hasn't quite said I could do that. He wants me to exercise my faith. He wants me to participate with Him in dealing with real life. You know, the life that he's called each one of us to do. You know, to go out and to share the good news of Jesus Christ with every single human being that we can. Because the time is short. We're running out of time. There's very little time left for this world to exist. And the world is passing away in the lust thereof. And so we need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So that not just that these things will be added unto us, but that other people would find God in the midst of them that God has been working in their life all along trying to get them to realize if they would just do the simple things, the ABCs, the one, two, threes, to pray, to read their Bible, to study their Bible, to fellowship with other people, you know, like in church, true, but also more so in everyday life, to be a part of this thing we call creation, to be in that sequence of events that God calls today, because he says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation. God is speaking today to all of creation. And he speaks every day. If we would but have ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit of God would say to us. So, learn slowly, but learn continually and discipline yourself. If you need to go exercise like I have to now, then back off your ministry. You know, walk away from, you know, the things you want to do and do the things you have to do. If you need to put on sunblock, then for God's sakes, put on sunblock. If you're disabled like me and you need to, you know, like take care of a ostomy that's on your side, you know, a bag, you know, that you got all your refuse going in, then for God's sakes, take care of it, you know. Don't put that disability on other people and make them have to suffer through elevating you as though you're something special because you're disabled. No, you're enabled in Christ in everything. So don't make people that have disabilities seem like they're something Superman, because they're not. 
they're just like you. We live a little different lifestyle. We choose to hide lots of times if we can, you know, things like my ostomy. You know, I choose to keep it removed from people because it's not gross, but, you know, some people kind of like, you know, they treat you different. So I'd rather look like I'm normal when <laughs> anybody who knows me knows I'm not normal. <laughs> Boy, that's obvious. But don't try to make exceptions for people, but rather make the exception the love you have for all of humanity whether it be disabled, enabled, Christian, non-Christian, love those people with the love of God that he's given you. And you'll find out that, guess what? You've moved into this synchronization with creation that God has created today to be. He wants you to operate in order with him. Order means Seder. It's, it's like being a part of a bigger picture, being a part of the puzzle, being a part of the master plan, finding the purpose for today. Not your purpose for life and going about it, but what is your purpose today that God has designed for you to be in? What has God made you particularly unique and special that you could be Jesus to someone else today? That's what it means to get into synchronization with all of creation as this is the day that the Lord has made so that you can rejoice and be glad in it because you have done the will of God as he has shown you to do today.